depending on the circumstance, the emotional circumstance, dreams can be cleansing. You know, dreams will work everything out uh, uh, in the dream, and then when you awaken, you can feel so much better because the work is done, or and or you have your dream, and it shows that you can, uh, you and walking in a fabulous restaurant and wearing fabulous clothes and everything, and that's something, for example, which has been um, prevalent in. I'm just speak, I'm speaking, giving it a collective, a you example, uh, prevalent in that human's mind and in the mind of Most High, God, Yahweh, uh, Elohim, Allah, whatever individuals call, call our um, originator, that divine creator, uh, in the mind of God, it's already done. So it means that you saw it in your dream and you can do it. That means no thing is impossible. And the prime and supreme example is the Honorable Michael Joseph Jackson and what his life is doing for all of us, even as he is no longer breathing within that flesh form as, 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 as a human. Uh, um, he's breathing all over this planet. And that's why humans are so moved by his life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hello. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, honey. Hallelujah. I, I believe that strongly. I, I feel like his spirit is definitely inspiring all of us. And uh, he has, you know, been a beautiful motivation to us because he has, you know, taught us about love, you know, ta teaching us how to, you know, change our ways. A lot of people, you know, before Michael Jackson, before June 25th, 2009, a lot of people's perceptions about life were different. Uh, their characteristics and personalities, you know, were completely different. They were you know, quickly to get angered and quickly, you know, to cause, they were just, you know, more towards hate, you know, and when Michael passed, they, they learned that, wait a minute, you know, this is a man who tried to instill the message of love, you know, for fi 50 years, and, you know, he entertained the world for 45 years, and we need to get together, and we need to you know, they understood. They finally understood. You know, it's sad that it happened after June 25th, 2009. But in a way, it's a blessing because in order to heal the world, we need love. Well, it, um, realistically, sometimes uh, exceptional uh, humans are, uh, they leave. And um, when they leave, then that's when they're discovered. And, and 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 not so much that Michael was discovered because humans always knew him. I mean, that's why everybody uh, um, that you're connected with, all the other ones who are connecting, the uh, um, the loving uh, living extensions that are connecting uh, across this planet, um, uh, other people, what what it did for them, the naysayers, the haters, the the uh, prefabricators, those who lied. And, and, and just created so much uh, horror and terror for his loving life, then they had to turn around and, 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 and eat that crap, you know, uh, to really find out that uh, he's not wacko jacko. Uh, um, that, uh, um, well, I might say some profanity, you know, so I, but, but a wonderful profane word is bullshit. You know, uh, the bullshit that so many of them established because all they wanted to do was get money. You know, and they were greedy. Right. And so they just made up a lot of stuff and, and a lot of things Michael uh, um, just paid for because he really uh, um, um, was not a fighter. He didn't do battle. He didn't go to war. You know, and it's just the same, um, this could be as humans who uh, say that, you know, they're Christians. And yet we have individuals who are Christians who are quickly and avidly uh, uh, willing to send everybody's children, their sons, their daughters, their husbands, their cousins, their uncles, their fathers, to do battle and fight and kill other humans. Uh, um, Jesus was not like that. Right. And Michael was not like that. So, you know, uh, sometimes people don't find out what's really going on until the person leaves the earth, you know, and then they have some regrets or whatever. But... Um, Michael lives because everybody who's listening and individuals who want to listen and some who are sleeping at this time and some who are just getting up wherever they are on this planet, 
they know the real deal about the Honorable Michael Joseph Jackson, as I say, Prince of Peace, honey, Prince of Peace. That's right, Prince of Peace. He was the Prince of Peace. He wasn't a, a fighter. He was a lover. Yep, absolutely. You know, and love was without condition because love is without condition anyway. So you know, but people always say, "Well, he loves or she loves unconditionally." It's like love has doesn't have any conditions. Love, love exists. Love is breathing, just like we're breathing now. You know, love is 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 a babe in the mother's living and loving womb. Love is. You know, it's humans who are uh, uh, unscrupulous humans who are caught up in emotional uh, uh, bondage, you know, uh, uh, being jealous, being full with enmity, uh, uh, angry, uh, possessive, as I say, you know, possessive of illusions. You know, it's like you're, you're holding your hand out and you, then you close it and, and because you think you've grabbed something. It's like you can't hold air in your hand. Right. You know, so that's like an illusion, but they're possessive of what they think they have in their hand. It's like you don't have a damn thing in your hand. Exactly. Oh, you know, hey, people need to get together, honey. They need to get it together because when you're honoring Michael and you're honoring his divine aliveness, then you cannot be walking around and, and just um, running willy-nilly and, 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 and full with hostility. Right. Definitely. Amen. Amen to that, Reverend June Gatlin. I believe in that because a lot of people, you know, want to seek justice and want to fight. I won't say a lot of people because a, a lot of people are, you know, here, you know, for Michael and really want to see justice prevail and, you know, want to be here for him. But some people, you know, it, it's sad, you know, are, are hostile. And I ask this question all the time. I said, how can you seek justice for Michael without loving your heart? You have to have love in your heart first in order to seek that justice. You can't do that without love. Well, you know, um, Ms. Tippy, um, you who are a dreamer, uh, which also can keep you in a place of serenity, which is likened unto peacefulness also, um, when you have to... Uh, sort of, quote, admonish, unquote, somebody uh, by asking the question, then when it's the right time and it's uh, the best timing, then sometimes it's necessary so that they can get a grip. And it's like saying, hello, is there anybody there? Yeah. You know, uh, um, it, when, you, when you, justice is going to be justice. And, and Michael, when we were together in 2008, um, one of the times that we talked, I told him that he was redeemed. Uh, he, had his, he, he, was, he was already exonerated. I had left a message for his attorney, Thomas Mesereau, um when he was going through all that hell in uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, that Michael would be exonerated, that he would be found not guilty, that he was not going to be in anybody's jail nor any human's prison. That's right. And um, that I, I left that message in May, and in June was Michael found not guilty. He was found not guilty. He never was guilty anyway. Exactly. But uh, we talked about the meaningfulness of being redeemed. That means to be cleansed, to be to have any and all, everything, whatever it is, wiped away. And and spiritually, Michael is one of the most astute spiritual humans on this planet. However, we have many spiritual humans on the planet who are doing excellent work, and yet because we live on this earth, 